Xbox Series S. This is a fantastic console, but this one keeps switching itself off. Hi and welcome back to The Shed. I'm Joe Bleeps and this is my Xbox Series S. It's a fantastic console, absolutely amazing piece of kit for the money. I love it, it's a tiny little powerhouse. However, this particular one has started to randomly switch itself off, either during streaming TV or playing games. So I've had a bit of a look online and it turns out that it's probably one of two things. One, the thermal paste has kind of dried out between the heatsink and the processor which looks like a bit of a fiddly job, or two, it could have just got itself clogged up with dust around the fan and around the vents, and it'll mean that the airflow isn't correct enough to keep the processor at the right temperature. Hopefully it's the latter, which should be quite easy. So what I'm gonna to try today is open it up, see if there's any dust, and if there is, we'll get that out, reassemble, and see how it goes. Okay, so first things first, I have never opened one of these before, so we're just going to have to see how it goes. I believe what we need is a Torx T8 and T10 driver, so I've got those for my little uh, wow stick screwdriver. Also, we're going to need some anti-static tweezers, some sort of prying tool. I've got this one here if we need it, possibly a sharp knife just to get under some initial stickers on the back. So let's take a look at those. So when we're looking at the back of the console, it's these two little bits here and here that you need to concern yourself with because there's just like a little sticker on each one. I could maybe heat them up a little bit. I'll see how I go with just getting a knife blade underneath each of those. I suppose this is where my tweezers are going to come in handy. Okay. Right, that lifted off fairly easily. I think it would be easier if it was warmer. Let's do a little bit of a test and see. Much easier. Didn't even need the tweezers that time and it took most of the sort of stickiness with it. To be honest, when it goes back together, you're not actually gonna need to put these stickers back on, so that's not terribly important. Right, let's see what we're gonna need for this one. All right, so this is the Torx T8 bit. Just take these two screws out and then the back just sort of let's get a better angle so you can see it sort of slides off and then hinges back on itself and that just removes out really easily so now we're looking at it from the underneath and we've got a number of screws in various different colors so there's one two three four five six seven in this bright green color which i think is the initial ones we need to get out. It looks like they're slightly chunkier, so they're probably the T10. Right, now with those out, I think I should be able to lift off the top of the console. So there's these two parts here, they need pulling out slightly, and then the central bit will just pop off. So let's get it the right way up, lift off that lid. and take a look at the inside. Okay, so now I am in there, looking at the ends here, there's a little bit of dust. There's some visible on here, but there's not a huge amount. Looking inside the bottom as well, there's a bit, it's a bit dark and there's a bit of dust on there as well, so I'll give that a clean. And then looking at where all the vents are, you can't necessarily get to the fan just yet. Looking at the end here, again, it does look a little dusty, but not too bad. So anyway, the next step, I believe, is we need to take off these boards so that we can then remove the, the metal casing and have a little look inside. Looking at the fan itself, it has gathered up a bit of dust, so I'll want to clean that. So that's what's gonna be next. So we'll just remove these boards. So we're back to the T8 for getting these off. So there's a little bit that plugs in on that one, so that'll need just carefully lifted out. Another little plug on that one. And again, a little plug on that one off the side. So now it's time to remove the shielding. And again, if I'm taking the colors as a bit of a suggestion, these four are separate to what we're doing. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of these. And these are on the T10 bit. So let's see if those two parts will now separate and see if we can get to the fan. 
I don't know, maybe this bit will just lift off now if I'm being optimistic. There we go. That lifts up and the fan just drops out. So again, we've got another casing here. Again, it, it doesn't look that dusty inside. The fan itself's kind of dusty. There's a buildup of dust around the edge there. And this is where all the airflow comes in and there's a lot of dust built up on the end here. Um, so I'm going to have a go at getting that out and cleaning all that up. So the fan will just lift out. There is a little plug inside there. Um, give that a pull and a wiggle and that will lift out. We've now got access to the heat sink so we can remove any dust from in the gaps there. Of which there isn't much to be honest but there is at the end so I'll make sure I get that cleaned out. I think there's a way of removing this. I don't want to cause any damage. That was easy enough. That just lifts out. Yeah, lots and lots of dust. I'm not going to brave actually opening up the power supply itself, but I will remove as much dust as I can. And then I've also got a can of compressed air, so I'll just spray some of that in afterwards. So yeah, now it's just a case of dusting all the bits and pieces. So all I'm going to use for that is one of these little paintbrush type things that comes with a lot of the modding toolkits. And I've also got a microfiber cloth, like a glasses cleaning cloth, just for getting the last bits off. So if I'm inspecting the inside, like I say, there's not a huge amount of dust, but there is some. So we'll get that out first. And if that doesn't solve the issue, we'll dig further next time and get some new paste for the PSU, the thermal paste, and get that all sorted. Now that's the main motherboard all done. Next up the fan, and the fan has got a lot of build up of, of dust on it and I think the blades as they spin, uh, it's important to try and get those as clean as I can as well. So yeah, on with those as well. Obviously this will help reduce noise as well. If you look at the blade I've just cleaned up there compared to the one next to it, there's a big difference. Like the amount of dust that's on there is gonna make some difference. Whether it's enough to cause the console to overheat though, I don't know, but there's only one way to find that out. Right, that's the fan much, much better. Just give it a last little polish. Right, now there's this metal casing. And that's much better. Now the shell, obviously on the outside, keep it nice and clean, but you can't really manage that so much on the inside. So again, there's quite a bit of build up around this main fan. And again with the dust. bottom plate power supply so we need to give that a bit of a clean look at that there's a little master chief on the psu case nice little touch i like uncovering stuff like that when you open these things up especially with new consoles like this with old consoles gosh some of the game boys and older consoles i've opened up you find some scary things inside those but these nice little easter eggs that's pretty cool Right, so time to remember how to get this back together. It's probably easier if I put the fan in first because I'll be able to get to the little plug. Definitely, definitely don't forget that. And there's like a little hook for the wires to swing around there. Make sure the fan's plugged in, get all the wires in place. And the fan should just sit in position. Yeah, it just sort of drops in and, and sits in the right spot. Then I've got the PSU with the airflow going that way, like towards the fan. And basically these little feet sit on the copper areas and that'll go through uh, a hole. So let's check I've got it the right way around. That just pushes down there like that. This lid will just slide in place. And there is a little bit of resistance because it's got like these little squidgy bits, so that's quite good. It means it, it'll just sit in place, but you're not you're not having to force anything. So that goes in there. And then if I turn it the other way up, this is where I'm putting some screws back in. And this is where I've got to try and remember which screws go where. But these bits on the back will be a bit of a clue. Those are where the longer green ones go, any of the other holes are where the silver screws, these ones, go. And then I've also got the little black screws for attaching those little daughter boards around the side. I'll put these screws back in place. I 
Okay, so normally I'd make a bit of a sketch as to which screw goes where, but this time I've had a bit of a mishap with my sketchbook, so I've nothing to draw on, so I had to just try and go by memory. However, um, these screws don't go all the way through, and these do. So what you've got to look at is on the other side, you've got the extra holes where the screws come out. So any that line up from there to there are not the ones you'll use for the little silver screws. Before this goes in the main casing, I've got to put all of these little daughter boards back on, um, which go on with the small black screws and each one's got a different connector so it should be quite easy to work out which one goes where. Right, now with all of those back in place, it's time to drop it into the main uh, shell. Right, so now we've got to get this big thing inside here. The main things you've got to watch out for is the um, USB there that lines up with this port here and these two plastic clips which were getting in the way before. So if I just lower that in there and make sure that that plastic clip is out of the way there. Line up my USB, just pull that around there, pull that one around there. Everything should be pretty much lined up in place. Um, and then we've got the other screws to go in which will connect to the actual lid and they are all in this case these these bright green ones so we've got one here two three four five six seven of those so it's time to pop those in right they're all in place so finally it's just the base to get back on and as before that slides in so it sits flat like that and then just slides forward and we've just got those two screws to go back in. In this case because I may well end up needing to open it up again and do the thermal paste for the moment I'm going to leave those stickers off but of course I'm going to need the screws in. And there we go all clean all back together. And there we go, all nice and clean and ready for me to test out. Hopefully that will help and now it won't end up randomly shutting itself down every now and then. Um, but if that does continue, then that's going to be something for another video and we'll look at the thermal paste and how we can uh, replace that. But in the meantime, um, I hope well, it's been useful. I've never taken one of these apart before, so if you've not seen one of those opened up, there's a video that shows you. <laughs> But yeah, it wasn't difficult at all, particularly by modern console standards that can be a bit of a nightmare normally. You just need to make sure you've got those Torx uh, T8 and T10 drivers, which again, aren't too difficult to get your hands on. So if you thought about that, or if you've got issues with your Xbox Series S and you were concerned about opening it up, then hopefully what you've seen there uh, will let you know it's not really anything to be afraid of. As with most things, um, take your time, take photos as you go, so it's easy to remember what goes where. And um, yeah, just enjoy it. Like it's fun taking these things apart and putting it back together if you're a nerd like me. So uh, yeah, that's that. Anyway, I'm gonna go and test it out and see how it goes. Um, if you like this and you like this sort of thing, I will be putting together more videos. I've no, I've not been around for a little while. Um, I haven't really had any projects to get stuck into and show you, but I've actually got quite a lot of stuff to show soon. So do expect more on this channel. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. I do appreciate that a lot. Uh, otherwise, leave a like, leave a comment if you've got anything to add to the discussion, particularly for next time I take one of these things apart. If there's something else you want to add, I'd really like to hear from you. And uh, yeah, until the next time, bye. bye.